These are the two top-of-the-line flagship watches out there that have removable bands. Obviously, they are off right now. Totally waterproof and amazing electronics inside. They're pretty much identical. One is called the 1015F3 and the other is the Lympho LEM6. Now, we've done reviews on both of these and if you recall, in this review, we even demonstrated the waterproofing by dropping it in a glass of water. Looked like this. Test the IP67 capability. Oh, look at that. It's not getting anything. Oh, that's good. It hasn't found anything to get a signal off of. That's giving me more hope that it's not just a fake thing. So, I want a pulse. So, oh, no. There it goes. Oh, you goodness. All right. <laughs> there is a bubble in the way. There is the pulse of water. Uh, the good news is it's a, it's a fully waterproof watch. Uh, the questionable thing is uh, what's it doing when it's doing its, uh, its uh, pulse rate. Hmm. Okay, after that, I basically dried the watch off and set it aside, waiting for some firmware updates that would allow it to do Bluetooth calling, like what's available now software-wise on the F3. Well, I never got the chance. When I attempted to turn it on, I found out it had fried. It was no longer working. I thought maybe the battery was just... Uh, low and needed charging overnight. I checked everything. Nothing worked until I opened the back. And that's what we're going to do right now because I'm going to show you how water can get into not only the LEM6, which it did and totally destroyed it, but it can do the same thing to the F3 because guess what folks? The designs are the same and the design flaw is in both of them. You're going to want to do this if you're ever thinking about putting your watch in water or even near water to prevent water intrusion. Let's start by opening up the back of the LEM6. To be able to take the back off, you're going to need to get a specialized tool. It's called a T3 by 40 millimeter, and you use that to loosen up all of the screws around the back of the watch which I've already done for you. Now, let's see how good you are. I'm going to take the little tag off from the LEM6. I'm going to take off the back. How quickly can you find where water could seep into this watch? You ready? Get set, go. There you go. There's the back of the watch. You can see the, the battery is here. There's the little optical thing for the uh, heart rate monitor. There's some wiring over here. When we look at the wiring, that looks pretty good. You see this little ridge around the outer edge here? That's the waterproofing seal. You see how it goes around the screw point there? That's where the back and the front fit together nice and snug and held on tightly with screws. Uh-huh. What have we got here? Look at this. There's a little bit of aluminum foil, it looks like. Some sort of a protective layer or coating or bag. Well, let's lift it up and see. What in the world is this? Because right here, right here at this edge, it's overlapping where the seal goes. So when I lift this up and get under here, you see this whole section comes up and you can tell that that's like just been taped on here. Last minute thought for some reason, maybe it's frequency isolation, maybe it's part of one of the antennas, whatever it is, it fits loosely on here and it just comes to a little point where it's wrapped around. See that? And if it comes down, and it lays on top of your watch close enough to that edge that it could get pinched, which it did on mine, water could come in at that little spot. That's exactly what happened. So what's the fix? Take the back off. Very easy to do. As you saw, as long as you have the tool, there's nothing uh, especially 
important on the back that gets disconnected all of these pieces will just put themselves right back again see the corrosion i got around the magnets i actually tried to clean it up and make it work which is why it looks pretty good in here but even after doing that it really i couldn't get it to go and in the next video when we tear this whole thing down i'll show you some of the places where corrosion can do serious damage but for this short video i just want you to be aware for the F3 and the LEM6, that if you take the back off and you lift that little section up and you press down on that little metal area to make sure it's tucked down below the watch, it's not hooked to any wires or anything, just get it down there. Tape it if you need to with some other tape perhaps and fix it so that when you push it down, it's a good distance away from the edge. How are we doing? Like so. See? The actual ceiling edge is right along here. And now it's not encroaching. It's down, down low. Then you could put the cover back on. Seal it back up. And you should have a solid waterproof watch. There's no rubber gasket that you have to worry about lying in place. Some of them have a, a special rubber gasket in here. Or if it is in there, it's in there really good. Then maybe that is a rubber gasket. Just make sure that that's in place before you screw everything back together again. That that's not crossing. And you're good to go. I mentioned that it's the same way on the... Uh, the F3, let me prove it to you. Mm -hmm. This is the F3. All the screws are loosened now. So let's pop that back cover off. There it goes. Here we are. Same basic watch. Where's our LEM6? Here you go. LEM6, look at that. Look at that. Very, very similar design, right? It looks like the application of all of this stuff is smoother on this one. Kind of a lousy job right there that may have led to that little excess material. Here's how it looks like here. Where's our magnifying glass? Does that help? Yeah. But look how close it is. So again, I would advise getting a toothpick or a tool or something lifting that little section up best you can. The whole thing should just lift up. Yeah, I'm not going to go too far with it. I'm just going to push it down. There you go. Just get that foil stuff out of the way. Good and out of the way. So you're really not going to have any problem when you put the back on. Okay, well... My screw-up, man, it wasn't even a screw-up. I was doing what it's certified to do. I just stuck it in a glass of water. But um, I'm, I'm happy and I'm sad. But I'm happy I'm the guy that it happened to, and I have another identical watch like it so I can continue to work with the F3. I'm sad about the LEM6. It could have happened to either one. I'm not bad-mouthing one or the other, although I will tell you that the uh, F3 has the software in it to do Bluetooth calling. And I'm hoping the LEM6 will have a firmware update that's going to allow the Bluetooth calling because um, they're pretty much identical. And it should be that way. Just got my thing looped around. There we go. The LEM6 software, firmware um, update should allow the same functionality that you can get on the 1015F3, but for now, I don't know if it does, and I can't obviously prove it because I can't do anything with it. But I can tell you, and we've seen it on video, that it does work, and it works really well for the F3. So, with that said, check the show notes down below for buying links for either one of these. And uh, first thing you want to do is get yourself a tool that says it's a T3. It's got this special little tip on it. Looks like a star pattern somewhat. That will work with these screws and fix that little glitch make sure that you're not one of those susceptible to water damage because of a design flaw you've been watching smartwatch ticks we will be back 
for part two, where we're going to take this thing apart and try to figure out where in the world they've hidden those antennas that used to be in the bands and all the other smartwatches. They've somehow been put in here. So let's find out. We'll see you again soon.